it start? Uh, how it all started in BTC? Uh -huh. So uh, first, uh, I I started at the United States 2005-2007, Goldgate University, uh, San Francisco, and uh, when once I came across the sign on the wall saying, "Are you afraid of public speaking?" Uh, if you are, please welcome our Toastmasters Club. So uh, I said, yes, I'm, I'm kind of not afraid of public speaking, but I had like very terrible English at that time, and I joined the club. So uh, I was an active member of the Golden Gate University Toastmasters Club, uh, participated in every meeting. And when we came to Kazakhstan, uh, it was in 2008, uh, we joined Almaty Toastmasters Club. At that time, it was not uh, registered yet. Uh, so when then we returned to Astana, and uh, in May, I think it was May or April 2009, uh, when we were working with my wife, the idea came to the, um, my mind to establish Toastmasters Club in Astana. Yes. And it was the idea to establish the first Toastmasters Club in Kazakhstan and Central Asia. So this was uh, in April, I think, or March. In May, we uh, set up the first meeting, May 2009, and it took us nine months, nine months to recruit, to motivate, to find 20 dedicated, enthusiastic people who would like to be the members of the first Toastmasters Club. Excuse me, just to clarify, uh -huh. are you saying us that uh, you t you need you needed nine months just to organize the first meeting. No, no, no. First meeting we organized on May, and yeah. then we organized the meeting every week, every week. Ah, so you need during to, nine months. You needed the nine months to properly start a regular meeting to find twenty members. Right. Yes, the idea is you can establish a Toastmaster Club if you have twenty members. So it took you nine months uh, to officially su submit to the registration of Applications the of 20 people, yes, app applications of 20 people. Sometimes we had a meeting when there were like five people. Can you imagine like yes. five people sitting, uh, <laughs> everyone is speaker, a speech evaluator, <laughs> a toastmaster at the same time. And at that time, some people of course can give up and say, okay, nobody wants to, uh, improve public speaking leadership skills. I also don't care about this, but uh, I thought like that should be my goal. I will achieve it anyway. It will It will take me maybe nine months, one year or two years. So we did, at, at the end it was like happy end. We established this club. It was February 23rd, 2000. Kind of men's day, men's day. So it I mean men's day. So can you tell us, uh, regarding, let's come back to this very first meeting, right? Can you tell us a little bit about your feelings? How did you feel about it? Did you have some fears? Or were you hopeful? What was your motivation uh, behind creation as well? Was it the selfish uh, mm -hmm. reason? Was it because you cared about, about the people of the city? Uh -huh. Or do you want to advance your own ambition? What was the motivation? There? Yeah, it's combined. <laughs> everything there, everything there. The first is that um, it will be a, a really kind of achievement for me to establish the first club. I have searched on the map and uh, haven't find uh, hadn't find any club in the Kazakhstan, and then searched Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, no club. So, was wow, wall that's like my chance. So it's ego, of course. Uh, the second uh, uh, reason is just uh, to help other people improve not only public speak public speaking skills but mainly leadership skills uh, i think we in kazakhstan we don't have many leaders who can transform their vision into reality we lack leaders we lack the people with the uh, with great values like honesty, integrity, excellence, uh, no corruption type of people. That was the idea. I thought like we will establish the club where there will no nepotism, no friends, you know? Uh, yeah, you are like, you're a good guy, you are my friend. If you did this uh, presentation, the requirement is eight, 10 minutes, but you did it for six minutes. Sorry, try again. You didn't, require, you didn't meet the requirements of the manual. So 
please do next time proper preparation and so on. So I thought I would be able to establish this place in Kazakhstan so where a different set of values. Yes, absolutely different set of values. That was the idea also. And also meeting friends, making connections, uh, helping people to get together, uh, to share the same maybe hobbies, interests and so on. Uh, I'd like to reflect a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I'm an officer of the club at the moment, as vice president of education. And I, I, and I can say that, uh, as an officer, I can say that uh, ATC transformed my uh, leadership style as well. Mm -hmm. Because working in the government, quasi government sector, we have a different set of criteria. It means, uh, as was said, everything should be like that. Mm -hmm. And then you see people challenging you, other uh, officers <laughs> challenge you, you say, and then you say, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, let's compromise, okay, uh -huh. I heard you, yeah. etc. So I think it's a fantastic thing. Mm -hmm. So the next question is a lot of people, and uh, I for a long time did not understand. Mm -hmm. Can you reflect a little bit? about uh, not only uh, the nepotism or corruption, mm -hmm. but other values of the ATC. Because a lot of people uh, don't understand how exactly the ATC experience helped you uh, to have these values. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this, this is like a not easy question for me. I mean, um, when we established the club with my wife, we thought about the uh, uh, absolutely specific set of values. Uh, like as I said, integrity. Uh, if, if for example this is blue, this is blue, this is yellow, this is yellow, we say that. If for example the officer didn't perform the role, we would like push him, motivate him. If they are not performing the role, we would say goodbye, you are not ready for this role so far, please. Or if you do it, you will find. If you don't do it, okay, go, step down, give the floor to another uh, people. So we thought about this, as I said before. So uh, what is going on now, I don't know. We, I left the club a uh, few years ago. I had like various conflicts, I think. Because when you uh, set the club, uh, you give some direction. Uh, I, I thought to celebrate 50 years anniversary in this club. I thought as Toastmaster as my baby, uh, because it took me nine months. <laughs> me and my wife <laughs> to produce, and then uh, it was I, you know, I uh, I thought like as a baby because it was very close to my heart, to my mind. Yes, yes. And uh, when you stepping down and giving the space for other people, for young people to grow, to feel, to be in the shoes of the leader, to yes. be in the shoes of the president, the other people they have different sets of their values. They might think, oh, you are from Karaganda, well, we are Karaganda people, you know. <laughs> if you not perform this rule, oh, okay, okay, we are friends, you know. It's fine, certificates here, here certificates for you, certificates for you, everybody is fine. Uh, so this was different, a little bit different uh, uh, story, different uh, sets a, of A values. different culture. Different culture, yes. That uh, people, it was weird to follow all the rules. Um, no, I don't. So, what do you mean uh, uh, following different uh, set of rules? What, what I say uh, uh -huh. here at ATC, at any Kazakh organization, uh, there are rules uh -huh. uh, of the company, there are rules of the chain of command, mm -hmm. there are requirements for works, mm -hmm. uh, there is a requirements for your personal department, mm -hmm. for very, every analyst, mm -hmm. everybody has rules. Mm -hmm. uh, the experience that uh, in many Kazakh organizations, mm -hmm. Uh, rules are not followed. Mm -hmm. What is different about ATC? Every single rule is followed, okay. and, and, and it is enforced. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is what I'm saying. This is mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. Yes, ah, yes. okay. Yeah. Uh, as I said, I don't know what is going on now. Uh, yeah, it is. Because, we are following. Yes, you are following. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. The child if, is is working. If you are following, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. If you're following, it's fine. But values is very important. Uh, do you have? Your chart or board, whiteboard? Uh, I'm afraid no? not here. You don't here. Okay. So there is a there is a, one kind of uh, lesson from Jack Welch. He's a manager, was the manager manager of the century. So he had two criteria to evaluate the people. The first one is the result. So did you achieve the result as yes. a 
employee as a manager and so on. And the second criteria to evaluate the people, can you guess? Uh, motivation? No. Excellence? No. Relationship? No. The second is, is, is quite a broad one, values. <coughs> values. So do you uh, meet the values of the organization? Does this person meet the values of the organization or more? So uh, what about the person who achieved the results but don't meet the values of the organization? What are you going to do with this guy? He's good. He's achieving the results. He's achiever. But his values contradict to the values of the organization. Yes. This is the toughest case. What are you going to do? Some people stay, say, we are going to leave this guy, okay, he will talk to him, yes, uh, gives him another chance, maybe he will uh, change his values. No, adult people seldom change the values. They're already set. By the age 25, you are already like, not kind of changeable in terms of the value. Oh, well, maybe we should be optimistic with it. Yeah, but <laughs> what, what he did, he fired these guys also. He fired the guys who achieved the goals, but didn't, make, didn't uh, meet the values of organization. Okay. That was his approach. And he was very successful. So what does this example tell us? It, it, it says that when you create organization, you are young, people, you have a bright future, you are going to work in organization, one day you are going to be presidents, the chief executive officers, managers. When you create the company, you create some culture, you uh, give you give some values, right? Yes. So if you see one person who is very good in terms of the productivity, but doesn't, uh, um, doesn't meet the, yes, adhere the values of your organization, you just have to keep him. <laughs> or her or because why? because this guy will destroy and corrupt the atmosphere and the culture of the organization very good point, thank you Andrew. Like, let's applaud this point <laughs> uh, so can you describe us what is the biggest challenge you faced uh, during uh, the founding uh, of your organization what is the biggest challenge that, that was a real problem for you thank you, yeah, good question uh, Did you even think about giving up? Uh, no, I didn't think about giving up, but my biggest challenge, and it was my failure, it was my failure, uh, because I didn't uh, spend much time at stake at the, during the years of 2014 15, because at that time my second uh, child was born, the third child was born, and I spent more time with my kids. And uh, my challenge was to transform these values to the other people, to other presidents, and I failed. I failed. I, as a leader, I failed because I didn't, I wasn't able to transform these values to other people, to other uh, presidents, or vice presidents, or other members of the club. And uh, this is my failure, and that was my challenge. I accepted it. I honestly um, uh, accept this challenge and uh, this uh, problem and this failure. So this was my biggest challenge. All right. Well, um, Samad, also, I, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, ATC, not, not only Astana or, or even on that team, mm -hmm. but people don't know about Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. I mean, 95% of people who live in Almaty and Astana, mm -hmm. they never heard about Toastmasters. They don't know about it. We're not transcend centers, and mm -hmm. almost a lot of people don't know about mm -hmm. it. And um, why do you think this is the case? Why do you think only uh, a few people, <clears throat> mostly people come here for friends or friends, mm -hmm. very rarely people come through social media, some other accounts, mm -hmm. or through wide exposure, through general news or other stuff? Mm -hmm. So, can you tell us why you think this is the case? Mm -hmm. Why ATC is still uh, almost a organization mm -hmm. uh, yeah the idea is that I think uh, the people don't care much about self-development about improving the public speaking skills leadership skills uh, because a few people are thinking about this searching oh 
I would like to find the best English-speaking club in Astana, or I would like to improve my English in friendly atmosphere in Astana. No, like they, most people like like flow uh, on like on the flow on the floor, like you know, like okay, what's going on today? Saturday, I go to restaurant, I go meet friends, I go uh, to the cinema, watch a movie. That's it. Like most most of the people, majority of people live like ordinary life. That's why I think they are um, not. Uh, I would like to clarify one uh -huh. question. Toastmasters is a very uh, popular and famous in the US, in the UK, in Australia, in mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. Not only uh, across the general population, it's also very, um, people know about it among employers. Mm -hmm. uh, employers in the US, in the UK, uh, they value uh, Toastmasters certificates and Toastmasters experience. Yeah. Why do you think this is not the case in Kazakhstan? Yeah, the case is the language. You, you mentioned like very uh, uh, English speaking countries like India, United States, Great Britain. The second issue is that uh, here in Kazakhstan we don't have so much competition. We don't so we don't have so many Kazakh companies who are like uh, uh, targeting the young talented people with uh, bright English and with great leadership skills. This is the culture issue. That's why I think that the people, oh, okay, anyway, I will get the job. Anyway, I will go somewhere and find something. But if you think about the United States, Great Britain, you have to every way, like wake up at 7 a.m. and do something. Uh, be competitive. Be not like a good only professional, but also be a good leader. You, can, you have to motivate the people. You have to energize them. So uh, there, there is more competition. And that's why you have to move. Uh, but here in Kazakhstan, you know, relax, enjoy life, uh, do something. I think this is one of the main reasons why Toastmaster is not so popular here in Kazakhstan. Well, um, I, I'm really, uh, I really like the fact that you uh, think about others, you care about the people and how you can see and help us. Can you um, tell us a little bit um, how, why, why ATC was participating in it? What exactly uh, new members can find at a ATC? What kind of skills? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, you, you were uh, talking about the leadership skills. Can you give us uh, 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 some examples? How, examples. Well, okay. well, I mean, not an abstract. Why, why to join? Why to join those masters? Right? Yes, but also examples of leadership. Right? Uh -huh. uh, how exactly do you become a great leader through A, B, and C? Okay. So the first one, why to join ATC? The first one is in English, of course. The second one, there is a material guidelines how to become a good uh, speaker, how to become a good leader. Everything is ready for you. You just have to follow the rules, uh, follow the guidelines. In my case, I uh, calculated my participation in the Toastmasters. I paid three hundred dollars uh, membership fees. Uh, I got from uh, my uh, public speaking experience and leadership experience. I am uh, teaching the public speaking courses, uh, seminars, and training. I got like well, already three thousand dollars from this. So ten times I earned more than I spent here. This is one of the reasons. Woo! Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I thought the public speaking is my career. It's a very important part of my uh, personal development, professional development. In terms of the leadership skills, it's easy. It's easy to be a boss in the company when you have position. Every guy, you have to do this and you have to do that. It's easy. But when you are boss, you are not leader. Try, can you be a leader among peers? This is really a tough situation. If you can learn here to do it, uh, to motivate, to engage, to involve other people, other peers, they are not your subordinates, right? If you learn this skill here at the Toastmaster International, you will have a great leadership skills in the future. And you can, of course, manage other people. You can motivate them. You can organize them. So it's very important skill for any person in any field, leadership skills. And here, if you have a good officer's training, if you have a good values here, you can learn this in Toastmasters International. Maybe in Astana Toastmasters. Um, yes, yeah, so, so uh, what, what I'm trying uh, 
to, to say, but, but uh, youth created uh, effectively not an NGO, but a c c c civil initiative. Mm -hmm. So can, do you agree that uh, ATC is, is great in terms of creating new civil leaders in Astana and all that? <coughs> Yeah, I said that it's hard to say uh, because I don't know what kind of people are now the members of the club. I don't know. I thought that we are doing this job. Uh, when I was the active member of the club, I thought like the people, when they, they come to Toastmasters Club, they understand the different uh, style of leadership. It is participative leadership. It is service leadership. When the leader is not the boss sitting at the top, but leader as a servant, as a person who helps other people to grow, to improve, to uh, be a better version of uh, yourself. So if, as I said, the officers, your uh, leaders uh, of the club are doing this job, they don't care about like only certificates and uh, ACG or DTM, but they care, really care about the people ordinary people who come to the Toastmasters yes. Club. In that case, yes, definitely this is the place where the people will learn different type of leaders, different type of leadership styles. So they will definitely can learn here and hopefully they will use this experience in other organizations. And my idea was and is my idea to develop 1,000 leaders in Kazakhstan who can improve their organization. That's my still idea. Still idea. <coughs> also, uh, guys, a uh, small announcement. Uh, recently, I came up with the idea of one million students, one million people who will learn something from me and one million people whom I influence in their life. So if you think that today you've learned something from me, please send me a message saying, Hi, Samad, I've been on your meeting. Uh, I learned something. Thank you very much. It will be really appreciated for me. I am counting one million people <laughs> during my lifetime. Who is uh, your phone number then? Huh? Who is your phone number then? Uh, <laughs> you can find me on social networks, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Samad Fana. That will be me. <laughs> Thank you, Samad. Can you also tell us, um, bring some real life examples, mm -hmm. how ATC help uh, members uh, in their uh, real life? Oh, uh, I don't know about the careers, but definitely they create careers going up, definitely, because the people come to the club, they improve the public speaking skills. Some of the many members, I think, they got the scholarship, like Kanat Bazarali, yes. he got the scholarship, uh, uh, Fulbright, other people got scholarship, because the Toastmaster, as you said, is a well-known organization in the world. If you were a member of the club, if you are Officer is the club, even better. If you were the president, oh, that's good. Because they will say, oh, the president of the Toastmasters Club is definitely leadership role. Uh, so in terms of the professional development, yes. And while I was in the club, it was like six, seven years probably, seven pairs, seven couples, seven <laughs> families uh, were formed in the club. Uh, guys, round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday, uh, I uh, made the training on leadership skills for one company, and the boss of this company, who, uh, he met his uh, uh, wife in our club. It was at the beginning, 2009, and he uh, came to the club exactly to find uh, the prayer. <laughs> he found he is happy, two kids, and uh, last week he mentioned this, Samad. I cannot uh, tell you more about uh, what kind of role you played or the postmaster uh, club played in my uh, fortune. So yes. he's still happy with his wife. And, I, <laughs> we, and my wife and me, we, uh, we were a guest in six out of seven uh, wedding ceremonies. So this is the, my answer to the question how the postmaster can. But there is no guarantee. No <laughs> Yes, and yes. grand grandchildren, yes. and then you can say it's because of the ATC. Yeah, they're like, like kids say, lady, 
Mommy, where did you meet? And where did you meet? I said, well, that was the Toastmasters class. <laughs> Master and I was many, many years ago. So there, it is part of the history of this family. Before we go to the next question, I'd like to tell to the audience, emphasize the point, um, there will be a new elections uh, in, in half a year or a year or something like that. In December. In December, uh, and there will be another elections. So guys, I want you to uh, understand that Toastmasters is a very valuable asset for you if you apply not only for Fulbright scholarship, but you apply to the Ivy League universities, top universities in the United Kingdom. If you want to have a scholarship, if you want to apply to Harvard, Stanford, any other university, this is a highly valuable asset in the US and the UK. So if you care about it, if you want to be a more successful candidate, uh, try to be a leader, try to be an officer, and that's going to be a great asset for you. So uh, the next question is, um, so in Kazakhstan, we have mostly young people who come to Toastmasters. In the US and Europe and around the world, it mostly um, older people. Mm -hmm. And here, um, a lot of students come, very young professionals. Mm -hmm. In the US and in other countries, it's uh, more business-oriented professionals come to Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why it is so? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, again, once again, if you want to be a member of Toastmasters Club, you have to offer intermediate level of English. Uh, so do your parents know English quite well? Please raise your hands. Who, whose parents, both parents, can speak English fluently? Raise your hand. So you see, uh, their parents, they are not speaking English. Maybe they speak other languages. So this is one uh, reason. I think. And also the second reason, after like you are forties, you are established, you have car, you have flat, you have career, you have family. People they like stability, they don't like to move out of the comfort zone. So there is no reason to come here, you know, to make presentations, speeches among like young people. Oh, okay, I will go out, I will maybe run, I will meet my friends. So it's also part of the culture. If, for example, here we will see more competition, more like a pressure on uh, mid-level managers, they will definitely do joy. If they will ask, the, the bosses will ask the middle-level managers, oh, you are not speaking English, go out. We'll find you a younger person. They will say, oh, no, no, I will go into uh, learn English, I will join Toastmasters Club, or I will join any other organization. So with this also culture, also culture influence this issue too, I think. So my next logical question is, um, uh, in, in Russia there is only one uh, Russian speaking, uh, uh, two. Two. there are two, two Russian school. speaking ah, Russia, yeah. Rus two Russian speaking Toastmasters? Two Russian speaking. Two Rus one, one, uh, one Russian speaking. In Russia. Moscow, in Russia there is only one Russian speaking uh -huh. uh, club. It's not the, the most powerful one, not mm -hmm. one of the biggest one. Uh -huh. Uh, here in Astana, we tried to launch a Kazakh-speaking club. Uh, it closed for some reasons, and we have zero Russian-speaking clubs uh, in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me why uh, the majority of the population speaks in Russian? And obviously, only a small proportion of people can actually speak in English. Yeah. Why don't we have uh, Kazakh and Russian-speaking Toastmaster clubs in Kazakhstan? So it's also related to the mentality. <laughs> So what, what, there is an anecdote. If you are realist, you learn Chinese. If you're optimist, you learn Russian or English. If you are like a realist or something, you learn English. So this is the attitude that of the people towards the future. Where is the future? Is the future Russian speaking future? No, I think like the Russian language is uh, the so the power of the fluence is a little bit going down. Is the Kazakh language is the future? For some people, yes, Kazakh language is growing. The demand for Kazakh uh, speaking uh, people growing up. But English, yeah, the people would love to go somewhere to study, maybe to work, work and travel, green card, move to another country. English is the language. And also, uh, that's, I think, that the main reason why uh, English is very popular, but Russian, Kazakh languages, no demand, no demand for this. 
I'm afraid our time is up, and I would like I would ask you the last question. Uh, President recently uh, was uh, there was a national address just uh, last week, uh, this week I don't remember, and there was one uh, person who was not speaking clearly, and the president was telling him, "Why cannot you speak clear? Why cannot you speak clear? Just tell clearly." And um, so that is the logical question: Why? Public speaking is not in demand uh, among uh, people, among uh, managers, among, in government, in private sector. But I have seen um, what I what, what I observed during um, during the expert committees uh -huh. at some other public event, not only inside the companies, but at some open and public expert events. Mm -hmm. uh, people cannot communicate clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, their their delivery is weak. Um, they uh, tell a lot of unnecessary, illogical uh, information. Mm -hmm. and, and, and nevertheless, uh, people mostly don't talk about it. Uh, so tell us why, again, I mean. <laughs> okay, when you are asking this question, I think you know the answer. So, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, this is nice <laughs> now to, to prove to yourself that you know the answer. So, uh, who said the values? Who said the values? Who hired the people? Who asked them what to do? What kind of qualities you should have? 